One of our YouTube subscribers left this comment. I see so many painters struggling with paint application, including myself. I think it has a lot to do with the consistency of the paint and the surface texture compatibility. Canvas boards seem to require repeated strokes to apply the paint, which seems to ruin the sponta spontaneous effect, edge desired, etc., etc. Any advice? I do have some advice. Actually, there are four different things that could be going wrong if you're having problems uh, with your paint going onto the surface easily. Now, the first one could be the dryness of the surface. Our subscriber who made this comment, who left this comment, uh, mentioned these boards, these canvas boards. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the canvas boards kind of suck. They're, they're, the texture is not always the, the friendliest for working, but they're not impossible for doing little studies on. So you can, uh, I'm about to show you something that you can use on the canvas board as well on to, as on to stretch canvas as well as any surface that you're painting on. Now, by the nature of paint, wet paint does not like going on a dry surface. It just doesn't enjoy going on a dry surface. Um, but I have this little method I use that has worked for me, worked for me for years and I'd like to share it with you. Uh, many artists have different ways of, of starting a painting so that it, it uh, starts with a damp surface and, and enables the paint to go on. And this is my way. Now, I use a little spray bottle like this and it has in it a mixture of, of poppy oil, uh, which you can get, is, this is made by Gamlin, get it almost any art supply store, and Gamsol. And I like Gamsol because it is really a, a pure, um, a, a pure substance, a pure uh, solvent to work with. And so I have it about a 50-50 mixture. And before I begin the painting, this is what I do. Now I'm going to put this, um, I'm going to spray this sort of low here so that you can see the difference between, I put a light spray over the surface of the canvas. But not just that because that leaves it too wet and I wipe it down. Now I want to tell you, I use poppy, poppy oil because it doesn't yellow. Uh, and also it stays wet a little longer. Uh, I, I used to use linseed oil for this, but then I was realizing that the linseed oil as it dried was also yellowing. And I didn't want the extra linseed oil to uh, that extra yellow. And so I, I then began to use the poppy seed oil, and I'm much happier with that. I dry it as much as I can. And what actually happens there is that the, the Gamsol evaporates, goes away, and that leaves just a little bit of poppy oil on the surface, just enough, and I can keep, keep um, taking away. Yeah, just enough so that the paint will go on easily. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So, um, so I guess some just doesn't matter what paint I load. If I load this paint in the brush, now up here, this is dry. You see, if I put this on, this is what our viewer was talking about. Um, I put it on, and you see it, it wants to skip, and it will require several, 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 several strokes um, to go on easily. But if I put it on this area that I have dampened, you see, this is what happens. It goes on much more easily makes it much easier for you to get started with the painting. So that's what I would recommend uh, dampen the surface a little bit, but be careful what you dampen it with. Now if you use just uh, just a solvent like Gamsol by itself, it probably will evaporate before you start painting. Um, and so I've just found that this works very, very well. So that's one way to solve the problem. Another way to solve the problem is you might not have enough paint in the brush. Now, a lot of people, especially those who are beginning with oil, are, um, are more in the, in the starting of painting with oil than they are uh, more advanced. They're so afraid they're going to waste paint. And you've got to get over that. Wasting paint versus wasting your experience, um, how do you weigh that? What, something's going to be wasted one way or another. So you've got to forget about wasting paint, put out onto your palette a, an ample amount of paint. And you begin that by putting out more than you think you're going to need. 
uh, to work from. Then, when you pick the paint up in your brush, pick up an adequate amount of paint to do the job. If you pick up, uh, well, and of course, this is, this is what will happen if you pick up an adequate amount of paint. You're going to get a nice, nice coverage uh, with the paint. If you don't pick up enough of paint, enough paint, even with the oiled surface, if you're just very, very shy and uh, you're so afraid you're gonna, going to waste your paint, and you pick up just a little bit of paint on the end of the brush, well, that's what you'll get, just a little bit of paint. And you can brush forever and you'll never get it, um, never get the richness that you get when you add enough paint into your brush. So don't be stingy with your paint. Remember that when you're trying to avoid wasting, paint's not the only thing that could get wasted. You'll waste your experience. And so just keep that in mind. Now, another thing that could be causing, it may or may not, uh, would be the angle uh, at which you're holding your brush and the pressure. Now, a lot of people, when they first start painting, will only paint with the tip of the brush like this. Well, if you only paint with the tip of the brush, you see, just with the tip touching, you're not going to get the coverage that you need. That brush needs to be slightly angled against the canvas. If you can tell here the difference between a brush angled like this and a brush that's just touching the surface like that. And you can see, uh, even in the oiled area here, the brush just touching the surface is not going to give you the coverage. So learn to angle your brush and learn to put the amount of pressure. Now, uh, that, that's another thing. And the angle, I've got those two together, the angle and the amount of pressure. If you put too much pressure on the brush, it's in, you're not gonna get the coverage. So a lot of people will uh, put their brush down, they just put all, you know, push it as hard as it can go. Well, look what you get when you get that, nothing. So you could push that all day long as hard as the brush will go against the canvas and it's not gonna give you anything. There again, Put just enough pressure, and if you're holding it at a slight angle, put just enough pressure to get a slight bend in the, in the uh, bristles of the brush. Just enough pressure to get a slight bend, and you'll get, if you have the right amount of paint in the brush, if you have it angled correctly, then you'll get really, really good coverage. So, and then the fourth thing is your paint might be too stiff. Now, if you have fresh paint, and if you if your paint you bought your paint from a reputable manufacturer, if it's a good quality paint, most likely, unless it's been sitting in an art supply store like for years and years and years, most likely it's going to be nice and creamy. Now I know that the Gamlin paints are really dependable in that respect. Um, so are the Rembrandt paints, or my experience with them, have been that they're really uh, dependable. There are other paints too, other brands too, that are really dependable in having that nice creaminess. Um, that makes makes applying the paint very uh, and easy and a, and a wonderful experience. But sometimes um, paints I have had Utrecht paints to be too stiff when they first come out of the tube. If they've been sitting in stock for quite some time after they were made, uh, the oil begins to settle out and the paint will be too stiff. If you try to paint with a paint that's too stiff, it's not going to go on the way you want it to. The way to solve that problem. Um, and I won't show you here, I'll just tell you, uh, or maybe to a point show you. The way to solve that problem is to squirt out a pile of that paint and take linseed oil. Now linseed oil is the oil that um, is used for binder in most oil paints. Uh, there are some oil paints that have uh, other binders, but the, the traditional binder in oil paint is linseed oil. So you take the linseed oil and I found the most effective way to do that is to take a palette knife and put this palette knife in the linseed oil so that it just gives you a drip like this and allow one or two drips of the linseed oil to drip on top of that pile of paint. Then take the palette knife, you want to pull the excess oil off the palette knife, take the palette knife and work that linseed oil thoroughly into that pile of paint. You do it like one or two drops at a time until the paint feels a creamy consistency. It should feel kind of like a, a, a hand cream that would come out of a little jar. Um, if you've paint, been painting long enough, you know what that creamy consistency is. Um, like you would expect from any, any paint that would come out of a tube made by Gamlin. So those are the four things that I can think of that 
might be causing problems and my guess is that if you're having problems with your paint going onto the canvas or onto the surface it's either one or a combination of these four points. So if you found this helpful uh, and if you would have something that's troubling you that you'd like for me to give you a quick tip about drop a comment right down here and I'll be happy to put it on our list. And also, don't forget we have those wonderful full-length video lessons at DianeMines.com. Go give it a try. Just visit the site and look at the titles. You might find something that could help you be a better painter. And there's your quick tip.